We are moving into the next session right away. May I invite uh, the Honorable Minister and, and the, pan the whole panel and moderators onto the stage kindly. Thank you very much, Supreme. Just bear with us, we're going to start uh, right away. May I request uh, the panelists uh, to kindly come on to the stage. Thank you very much. Uh, could you kindly come onto the stage? Monsieur Maurice Levy, thank you very much. We have a very, very eminent panel here uh, today for this discussion on, on Image India. Besides the Honorable Minister Salman Khurshid, who will just be joining us, we have uh, lead panelists, Mr. Maurice Levy. We have Dr. Jyotsna Suri, Vice President Fiki and Chairperson MD Bharat Hotels Limited. We have Mr. Rajan Bharti Mittal, Past President Fiki and Vice Chairman and Managing Director Bharatri Enterprise Limited. We have Mr. Piyush Pandey, Executive Chairman and National Creative Director for Glivi and Mesar India. We have Mr. Nandu Nandkishore, Executive Vice President Nestle and Mr. Yamija Sinas, Chairman Asia Pacific Boston Consulting Group, who will be um, joining us today for this excellent uh, session. We are very pleased to, to have uh, with us Mr. Siddharth Zarabi, National News Editor of CNBC TV 18, who will be moderating this panel on behalf of, of, of all of us. Um, We are, yeah. We are going to start with our, our lead panelist, Monsieur Maurice Levy, who is chairman and chief executive officer of Publicis Group, the world's third largest advertising and communication group. He's widely recognized as one of the leading figures in the communication industry. Mr. Levy has been with Publicis since 1971. He holds the distinction of Commandeur of the French Legion of Honor and Grand Officer of the Merit of uh, National Merit in, in, in France. Both in 2004 and 2009, he was awarded Benjamin Franklin Award and the American, uh, French American Foundation in New York Award. He's really uh, somebody who's at the international level known for his strong views and an excellent push place in, in the whole PR world. He served on the board of World Economic Forum, and we are really happy that he's taken the trouble to come all the way from Paris to join us today. Monsieur Levy, please. Thank you. Bonjour. Thank you very much. Uh, Naina, thank you very much for the invitation. It's a, a great honor to be here today. I was asking myself uh, why I have been invited to speak in, uh, in front of such audience. I'm a foreigner. I uh, visited India a few times, but I don't know enough about India. So I know that usually uh, we ask advertising people to speak about something they don't know anything about, and uh, that's fine. Uh, but uh, I found the reason why uh, my presence was a little bit legitimate. I have listened to the speeches and the discussion this morning, and I must say that I feel at home. Uh, politicians are blaming media, uh, entrepreneurs are blaming politicians, 
and uh, everything is fine, so we are in the house of order. Uh, when I started to think about the topic, uh, it was like a powerful rewind button to me. Like many, I have been absolutely mesmerized by the biggest democracy, Gandhi, Nehru, the Beatles, George Harrison, who has got a lot of his, his inspiration in India, Ravi Shankar, Bollywood, and uh, you were, uh, Naina, you were mentioning women, Indira Gandhi, uh, as uh, head uh, of the biggest democracy of the world, so that was quite uh, impressive. And of course, some will say, that the new, will say that the new country arose in the 90s and that this cliche got out of style. And they are right. A newly overhauled India soared and went for the world, but I reckon that modern India remains rooted in these images, just one example, the incredible India campaign, and here I'm happy to give uh, 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 Ogilvy uh, my hat off and an accolade for uh, this great work. Uh, this campaign is a magnificent ambassador that has been circulating with great success while highlighting the Taj Mahal and traditions to push it further we could almost say that today's Indian entrepreneurs and moguls, the modern, credible India, are the new Maharaja echoing this incredible India. In the last 20 years, India has uh, emerged from a very poor country with a terrible level of poverty and a third world image to a fast growing country uh, and uh, an incredible capability in IT and uh, a lot of uh, new progresses uh, in education uh, and um, in modernization of the country. And uh, I think that uh, all this is something that we have to bear in mind. But uh, there is also some challenges. And uh, allow me to speak uh, my mind as we are among friends today. Um, yeah, so I, I truly feel that uh, Imagesia has been uh, recently disparaged, damaged, dented, despite its economic and social success. I have said uh, in the private conversation that maybe the mics will be cut. This will be because I will make a few criticism if this happens, so it's not a technical issue. Uh, that you, you will have to face. And maybe I will be uh, taking an earlier flight. Um, and if sustained, this grim trend would be vastly detrimental to Indians' image. You see, if I did learn one thing, the hard way while servicing a client during uh, four decades, it is how fragile an image can be. And you can take just one of the latest examples which is BP, three years after and beyond billion of dollars that they have spent, BP is still struggling image-wise with the aftermath of the oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. Admittedly, a country is a very different animal. I never uh, believe and I'm not one of those drawing a parallel between a brand and a country. As, in my view, there is no such thing as brand India. However, there is something which is extremely important, which is image India. Just like a brand image can irreparably suffer from connecting negative dots over time. And I will now, with your permission, say a few words about uh, uh, some negative dots. And uh, please forgive me for that. But I think it's important that we speak uh, the truth. Violence to women is one such dot. A year ago, a 23-year-old student was raped and killed by six men, and many felt that the Indian authority didn't react in a timely fashion to this dreadful event. You have to know that this has been one of the most important topics in social networks the internet and uh, 
the social networks were full of that story, and you should not see that just as a fait divers as we see in French. The minister has spoken a lot about corruption, so I feel authorized to mention corruption, which is another dot, and despite the recent effort, India remains in the lower third tier of countries according to Transparency International. The minister has spoken about red tape, so I can also cover that uh, uh, subject, which is an obvious black dot. You mentioned the World Bank's doing business report versus South Asia. The 2014 edition points to twice more and twice longer procedures for starting a business. And forget all surveys and report, just consider the visa procedure. This is my passport. You see, in my passport, I had to pay $370 to list the countries I have been to over 10 years to remember my last visa number and to indicate the nationalities of all my family members. I hope that no one has changed nationality in the meantime. So, compared to that, the so-called tight U.S. immigration cost you $14 and is a really piece of cake uh, when you fill the forms. Last but not least, infrastructure, which is falling apart. This is detrimental to Indian people and the economy, but this also deters global investment. As a reminder, a much smaller country, and now we can speak about a much smaller country, like the UK, just announced a 375 billion pound pipeline of infrastructure. This is a matter of global competitiveness, and I will not dare to make any comparison with China. The bad news is that people could be tempted to increasingly connect these dots. They don't do that today, but they may well do this in the near future. The economic slowdown no longer eclipses them, and shocking rapes can ignite or revive criticisms. India remains the second fastest growing Asian economy, but it is decelerating sharply. This has been covered. And like in 2012, Vietnam, Indonesia, Malaysia, and the Philippines were likely growing faster than India in 2013 also. And overall, I believe that investors have more dabs now than two or three years ago. This is not a very good news when investors begin to have misgivings. But the good news is twofold. First, India is by no means starting from scratch. Assets are rock solid. As the Minister Taro once put it, India is not an underdeveloped country, but rather a highly developed one in an advanced state of decay. I don't know if I share such hard judgment of decay, but I do agree with the highly developed country and therefore with the existing quality assets. Here, I think about democracy, the cultural melting pot, the entrepreneurial spirit, technology expertise, education. Take a break and think about successful Indian, university-trained people you know abroad, in the Silicon Valley, in Europe. Now, do you see the potential? In a nutshell, talent, knowledge, and competence, but unfortunately, without the appropriate structure at home. Publicity was placed to elaborate on these talents. With 2,500 employees across the country, India is key to us, and it's a group-wide focus since all our brand I have, have invested in India. It's a focus governance-wise. We have one of our executive uh, member committee with Richard Tobakuwala, and he heads all our digital operation from the US. It's a focus investment-wise. In four years, we made no less than 10 acquisitions, especially in digital and in other advertising-related operation, and we, we look forward to strengthening our expertise thanks to Indian talent, 
and we will continue to invest, as I said it to the press yesterday. Second, using these assets, India potentially is merely eye popping. You have size and potential momentum. By 2025, you will be the largest consumer market in the world. By 2030, India is projected to have the world's largest middle class population. The cake will get bigger, but quality will also improve. In digital, with less than 10% of the current population has internet access. In mobile, as Indian internet will be more mobile and flexible than the Western countries. And cherry on the top, which is not that common, people from all around the world do wish the best to India. You have something which is quite unique. People love India. They like you, they like the population, they like the country, they like the mystic, and that is something which is extremely important because when a decision has to be made, they look at this and uh, they speak not their mind, but their heart. So we have the perfect recipe for success, provided that no black dot is overlooked. Corruption, infrastructure, but also bureaucracy. Because trust me, you don't want to be remembered by the Guinness World Record as the country that managed to beat my own country, France, from a red tape perspective. Now, how do you do that? How do you get this success? Of course, as an admin, I'd prefer to elaborate on the desirable image and to talk about marketing and advertising, but this is not what I do recommend. I believe it's more essential to focus on facts, since whatever marketing you put in place, facts are stubborn and they end to backfire when ignored for too long. At the end of the day, it's all about the discrepancy. You have made amazing progress in the past and you have rightfully communicated on it. But now has come the time to progress, to have a new giant step by getting goals and energy in order before launching any new message. Perception is reality, but reality has to be perception today. It's not for me to say more, and on this note, I'm happy to join the discussion panel. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Levy. I uh, now have the pleasure of uh, asking Mr. Salman Khurshid, the ex External Affairs Minister, for his remarks. Thank you very much. Good afternoon uh, uh, to, to all of you. I'm, uh, I'm very pleased to be here this, this morning. I've, I'm, I believe I'm a regular feature at FIKI, and, and, and therefore I have, to, I, have, I have to be very careful that uh, I don't just go on repeating what I've said to you before. Uh, but um, obviously, ministers must be consistent. Uh, they, must not be, they must not change their mind every day. Uh, and as I understand uh, from, from uh, the fact that you've been thrown off your time schedules a bit, uh, ministers should also be precise, concise, and brief. Uh, and that's what I shall, I shall try to be. Uh, delighted to be here uh, as, the, the, uh, as a guest of uh, Nena Lal Kidwai, President, in her, uh, in her final uh, uh, overs of, uh, of a very delightful match that we have watched. Uh, and we would uh, wait to see how many sixes she gets uh, in the closing balls. Um, Mr. Didar Singh, of course, Secretary General uh, and, uh, and a good friend, both from time and government. Um, and it's good to see how government can seamlessly move into private sector and private sector can seamlessly move into government. Uh, very eminent, eminent uh, panelists, um, captains of industry, a very, very distinguished uh, audience that we have here, uh, friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen. I was, uh, uh, I caught the last, uh, last bit that uh, the most eminent uh, panelist today, Mr. Maurice uh, Levy, was, was saying to you, and I, I caught something about, uh, something about a tragic incident that happened last year. Um, I should know what, what that means because uh, uh, it was a tragic incident that, uh, that really shook the conscience of this nation, uh, not because these things haven't happened before or haven't happened since, 
Uh, we live in a complicated world. We live in a world of envy, in a world of, of disease, in a world of, of discomfort, in a world of, of uh, uh, diseased minds. Uh, and the best efforts and best intentions of any society in the world today, any society, and underline any society, to ensure that we live in peace and we live uh, in dignity uh, is belied by incidents that happen all the time. And I, I just want to say this to you, that, that I understand uh, something going viral and something, something uh, influencing the media and influencing public opinion uh, across the globe. Uh, but I think that there is something called proportionality. Uh, we don't even grieve uh, anymore uh, because we have been told that grief is also something that must come uh, in a manner that is dignified. There were times when in India, uh, and it's still available, those models are still available, where uh, young people, uh, young wives, for having lost their husbands, had to grieve with great passion, and they had to show that they were, they were grieving. Uh, because if they were not, uh, then it was thought that they were really insensitive. And it's, uh, it was upon us to say that it's not that important. You don't have to break your bandals, and you don't have to pull your hair, and you don't have to tear your clothes, because grief is something that can be, can be conducted in a manner that, that allows, you, allows you to live with hope, even in those terrible moments of grief. India is a country, don't forget, where women used to go on to the pyre of their husbands uh, because that was the only way they could show allegiance and faith and, and, uh, and commitment to their husbands who had died. But we changed that. We changed the law. Uh, and we changed the law and we said that this is not acceptable. Uh, and we, went, we got to a point where we, where, where we have reached today where men and women are equal in this country. But what we can do is we can help men and women become equal in terms of their ability to contribute to society and equal in terms of their capacity to take from society. This is what we can do, and we have done that. And I think that's apparent from the fact that uh, although only two of them are present here, uh, but if you just look around and uh, on another day you could have many more sitting here than they are. And there are two outstanding women who are there, not because they are women. They are, they are outstanding because they are outstanding. They are outstanding Indians and something that we are proud of today. But what we can't do easily, what we can't do easily is to make people, men and women, equal in their ability to do violence. Now that you can't change. People, uh, the males in, in humanity and in amongst animals are made for greater violence. What we can do is through education control and give them control of their violent, violent sentiments. But we cannot reduce them to non-violence simply by wishing them to be non-violence equally. But then the biggest message of non-violence that somebody has given in this country, frankly, was a man. But then you say he was not a man, he was an, a he was, he was an angel. He was a saint, and that was Mahatma Gandhi. The greatest, the greatest and I believe the permanent message of nonviolence was given by none other than, than Mahatma Gandhi. So I think it is upon us, each one of us, to be proportionate in our understanding of the remarkably dramatic changing reality of India. There is an India that is very different, that you want to address, that you try to address, and you address it through CSR, and you address it through sensitive labor policies, and you address it through institutional decisions, and you address it through challenges to established norms and established institutions, political parties and organizations. And that's the wonder of Indian democracy, that we are able to do this, and that we have been able to do this successfully. And, but there is an India that hasn't changed yet. And there is an India that is holding back and resisting. But let me just tell you, that India and the reality, ugly India, ugly reality of that India is no different from the ugly reality of Harlem. But we don't spend our time in, the, in India talking only about the, the ugly reality of Harlem. We know it's there. We know it's there. And we are sensitive. And I know that, that the American society is doing its best to tackle, tackle these problems. We also have certain, we have certain uh, 
issues on which we believe that we've done better than anyone else in the world. India, from the first day of its democracy, gave equal rights to its men and women. That was not true about other democracies in the world. Other democracies took a long time. But that is not to say that we sit, sit back on our laurels and say, all is beautiful and all is fine. There's a lot that is to change. And the lot that is to change is a change that is taking place now and here. And what we want is encouragement. What we want is understanding. What we want is consultation. We don't want to be lectured. And we don't want to be told how bad we are. We know that we have warts. And we know that we have scars. And we know that we have shortcomings. And that is the very purpose of modern, vital Indian democracy, to ensure that we can address these issues. And we have tried every instrument of law, of constitutional jurisprudence. We have tried every single instrument to address what are our problems. But everything that might appear to be a problem may not be a problem. Indian legal system may be slow. Indian legal system may not be, may, may not be the best in terms of the complaints that an individual may have about its inability to sensitively respond to what the Indian legal system does to their aspirations. But I'll tell you one thing. The Indian Supreme Court has said we will not handcuff people because it lowers a person's dignity to be handcuffing them. The Indian Supreme Court has said, I am sorry, the American Supreme Court has not said this. I am sorry the American Supreme Court has not said it. I've been the law minister in this country. I do not believe that I ever heard in my life expressions like cavity searches. I never heard an expression like that as a law minister and a lawyer. But I do understand. I do understand that circumstances may be different. I do understand that situations may be different. But I also understand, may I also understand that there are people who don't understand. And you're not the only people. People in America are not the only people who don't understand. There are people in India who don't understand. People do not like the idea that I said, if I do not get justice for my diplomat in the United States of America, I will not come back to parliament. Was that a terrible thing to say? There are people who think that I am being, uh, I'm being dramatic in saying that. Somebody said to me, there are 50,000 Muslims in Muzaffarnagar, and you didn't say you would not come back to parliament if they were not given justice. I believe that giving them justice is in my control, my right, within the, the, the government, the democratic government, elected governments of UP and India. We will do that. But it isn't for me to be able to exercise the same right in the United States of America. Therefore, I speak to America through diplomatic channels. And my diplomatic channel has been interrupted. That was my concern. That was my, that was, that was my, 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 my agony that my diplomatic channel has been, has been interrupted. But I want to say it here. I want to say it here, and I don't mind if every, anybody writes an editorial against this. We have an extremely, exceptionally valuable relationship with the United States of America. And I do believe that they have similar sentiments about us. Can something in which an enormous investment has been put in by both countries, both of emotions, of, the, of, of economic instruments, of, of political outreach, enormous amount of investment put in over generations. And when we had reached the pinnacle of our relationship, the pinnacle of our relationship was that from being a sanctioned, sanction-inflicted country, we became partners in nuclear research and development of peaceful nuclear, nuclear policies. And when we became partners in that, we believe that we had opened a paradigm shift in our relationships. So if some, some small but irksome, hurtful incident happens, do I not have an expectation that my strategic partner will give me the response that I deserve? And do I not know that it is my obligation to give my strategic partner the response that it deserves? Is it unreasonable to say, we must resolve this problem is it unreasonable to say that we cannot, we cannot tell ourselves that there is no solution to this problem? Is it unreasonable to say that you can talk to Iran about nuclear weapons? Is it unreasonable to say that you can talk to the Taliban in Afghanistan? Is it unreasonable to say that you can shake hands where you dropped the atomic bomb? Is it unreasonable to say that where you lost thousands and thousands of your men in Vietnam, that today you can become their partners? Is it unreasonable to say that people who are your strategic partners have one small expectation that we be allowed
to live with dignity. And now we send a diplomat, that diplomat must be allowed to serve with dignity. If you feel, if you feel it's important that we sit down and talk at any level, we must sit down and talk. These days, telephones work. These days, mobile phones can get you anywhere. These days, there are faxes, and these days, there are emails. There is no reason why a conversation of the high quality and the high cadence that we have with the United States of America should get interrupted. But it gets interrupted because there are some people who sit and pontificate and say, this is time for war. But we answer and say, no, the time for war is over. This is time for peace. This is time for nonviolence. This is time for living, living the high principles for which we've just recently celebrated a life, a life unparalleled in our times, the life of Nelson, Nelson Mandela. What Nelson Mandela stood against, what Mahatma Gandhi stood against, and what I believe the President of the United States stands against, I think are not things that can be undermined because some of us, lesser people who do not have a vision, who do not have a conviction, and who perhaps don't understand the enormous responsibility that we owe both to those who have gone before us and those who will have gone after us, continue on some egoistic position to say, I believe this is the right thing to have done. There is no such thing as the right answer in philosophy. You can only try to get the best answer in your pursuit of the right answer. None of us have a right to say we have the right answer. We only have, given the circumstances, the best answer. And my best answer is that two important, valuable friends must be able to say this is not how we must deal with, it, with each other. And I do not mind saying, uh, at the risk of being attacked, I do not mind saying that the United States is a valuable partner and the United States must understand it's a valuable partner and it must understand the value of partnership. Just with those words, I would now like to say to you, how do you want to see us? A land of snake charmers, a land of the Taj Mahal, as a soft power, as an emerging power. I once said somewhere in an international conclave, India doesn't want to be a power. India wants to be a friend. India wants to be a partner. And in the modern day, modern day uh, conversations that take place internationally and globally, somebody said, please don't say that again. You will not be taken seriously. You will not be taken seriously if you say that you don't want to be a power. But I do believe, I do believe that the normal descriptions of what is power do not sit in India with comfort. Our idea of power is far more philosophical and it's far more, it's, it's, it's far more emotional and it's far more larger, larger than the idea of power that one is accustomed to in international affairs. And I do believe that when you deal with India, you have to deal with diversity of timelines. You have to deal with the India of the past, the present, and the future all at the same time. You have to deal with the India in terms of diversity of language, the clothes that we wear, the aspirations that we have, the, the things that we want, and the things that we say. You have to look at the, 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 uh, the demographic dividend, the young India that is stirring, that is demanding, that is wanting to contribute. You look at what India is, is able to do. Do not believe that when India speaks, it speaks only because it has its own markets. India speaks because it has a very special relationship with the people for whom it has fought over the centuries. When India speaks in Bali for the poor to get food security, it is not India alone, but many other countries that feel, feel strongly about the same sentiment. And then, not to forget the soft power of India. Indians don't make movies for themselves only. Indians make movies for everybody across the globe, from Russia, to Af from, from Russia to Africa, from Southeast Asia to Latin America. There are Indian movies to which people dance. Even if they don't understand the language, they understand, they understand the music. And then, of course, we are not only at home, we are not just snake, snake charmers at home, but we are actually traveling the globe, and we are coming in a, in a manner which today I believe you would know from your continents, from Europe, from Americas, from, from Africa, that India is there to stay. And I spoke to an African president and I said, I do know that India and China are competitors. I do know that China is here in a big way, but so have we been here in a big way. And how do you see both of us? And he said, very simple, India has, is rooted. China 
is an important partner for us. China comes, China brings its people, China develops projects, China makes money, and China goes. But India is here to stay. And he pointed to the food that was placed on the table for us to eat, and he said, you think this is yours? And that was an Indian samosa. And I said, yeah, that's a samosa. He said, no, this is an African samosa. This was given to us by India, and this has now become an African samosa. So the power of India is the power of the African samosa. Keep that in mind next time you advertise. Indian companies, Indian companies, I believe, are amongst the outstanding companies. I talked about CSR. I've talked about, talked about the things that, that modern Indian industry is doing in terms of outreach to the people, greater stakeholders being involved in their decision making, grassroots innovation, some of the outstanding work that's being done by outreach, it is being done by, by Indian. Uh, Indian uh, companies. So may I just say to Fiki on this important occasion, never be, never be despondent about, uh, about uh, a couple of things going wrong. We are too large, we, we, we are too large uh, elephantine uh, in our existence to be worried about some little thing going wrong somewhere. We have a determination to overcome, to prevail, and to resolve. I think the important thing is conflict resolution and differences must be settled as quickly as possible within the country and outside the country because we have destiny calling us. There is a beautiful sunrise waiting for India. There is no sunsets here. It's all about sunrises and we welcome you to the sunrise here today in Fiki. The colors of Fiki may become the colors of your life. The tricolor of India may continue to, to flutter the highest in the world in partnership, in association, in collaboration, and in peace. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, we have around 20 minutes. Uh, we have 20 minutes odd for the entire panel discussion, and clearly, uh, it's it's been a fantastic start to something that's so deeply, uh, you know, relevant to all of us Indians. Uh, without any further ado, we have a panel, and the minister is kindly staying back. So I'm going to ask the first question, taking off from the two speakers who, uh, you know, spoke before us. The first question, really, does a country of the size of India of the size of the market that it possesses, uh, of its diversity, of the fact that uh, it is an absorptive country, it absorbs ideas, technology, people, and has been doing that over millennia. Does it even need to bother about how the world sees it? Does it need to only work and let uh, its work speak for itself? I'll go across to the ad man on the panel, Piyush Pandey, uh, for an answer on that. Uh, I'm not a pessimist. And I am a believer in India, and I think we have a brand. We have always had a brand. It's just that the brand is looking for glory around the world. We are a brand which is awaiting glory. So I wouldn't start by saying that we don't have a brand. I have another problem, that if you have to create a great brand, you must have a stable brand custodian. Now the problem is that the custodians are from various parts of the of thought and belief. So my request, if you want a brand India to be made, is please make somebody win this time. Anybody. One guy. I don't like drawn matches. Drawn matches don't call for audiences. Okay. The second thing I want to just finish off so that I take my time very little, that every brand has a story. Incredible India was a famous campaign only because India had a story on tourism. I think we need a few more stories. I believe there are stories in the making. The moment those stories are ready, you need just two big stories, whether they are about rural growth or they are about industrialization, and then you sell a book of short stories. That's the time when people read the other stories which might be in the making. How do albums sell? Albums sell because two songs are great, and you are compelled to hear the other eight songs. So let's wait for a story. There are storytellers out here who will tell the story. Let's make a story, sir. 
Thank you very much, uh, Piyush. Uh, that brings me to the next question, and really uh, this was something that was said by the ministers in the previous panel also. And the point that you touched upon, Piyush, uh, is Brand India or Image India suffering because of the lack of a strong political leadership after all? in a country with such huge diversity, you would naturally expect not a dictator, but someone who can at least take charge of things. And the passion with which the minister spoke, uh, had everyone else been speaking like this, would it have made a difference to our image? I'll uh, let Rajan quickly answer that, and then perhaps try and get some other people to speak about it. That's it, I know him well. Uh, you know, I heard the minister speaking, and I heard the earlier ministers also speaking. I think the passion is back in this government. Is it too little, too late? That time will tell. As the minister said in the opening remark, let the voters decide in 2014. But it's not about one election. It's about the country. It's about the nation. We were a flavor of the world two years back. It's not that long back. All the issues that we are hearing, governance, weakness, indecisiveness, and I heard Morris speak about women issues, corruption issues. To be honest, they were all there. We had the P5 come here because India was really a brand which was shining. What happens in China? I go to China often enough. The issues in China are probably tenfold than what India has. Just because we are showing our economic weakness, the world is looking at us in a very differently. And China, with all the human rights, because they are economically very strong, everybody goes there and looks at that brand. So we need to course correct ourselves. The, the question really is, does India want to become relevant or important? That's something only the political class can tell us. And as Indian citizen, I can tell you, we want India to be important and very important. Okay. Uh, might is right in some ways, uh, as well as the need for a brand custodian. Let me go across to an international voice and, uh, on the panel in terms of your uh, experience. Do we really need to carry about, uh, care about how the world thinks of us when we have issues like 300 million people who don't get uh, uh, you know, three meals a day? Uh, or the issues of women, especially at a time, and this is the sad part, as a culture, over thousands of years, we have worshipped our women. How did we get this wrong? Nandu. Uh, thanks, Siddharth. Uh, as uh, somebody who's part of the first generation born and brought up in an independent India, and having worked overseas now for the last couple of decades, I have a unique inside-outside perspective. And to some extent, it is perhaps true that as a culture, uh, we love to see the cloud in the silver lining. And this is something that is reflected in our media. And no wonder, therefore, our media uh, and our society tends to focus on the negatives, and that tends to shape a little bit the, the, the perception. Now, what I'd like to do is instead take specifically the issue that you referred to of malnutrition uh, and talk about how we could change the nature of the dialogue from negativism to action-oriented and positive dialogue. It is true that our human development indices lag behind those of our East Asian neighbors. This is true. Uh, whether you look at the rates of stunting for children below the age of five, upwards of 30 percent, or the rates of growth uh, of diabetes, obesity, cardiovascular disease, it is an issue. But what we could do instead is go to the root cause of the problem and use a little bit of rational dialogue we know, for instance, and this is a, a, a little bit of a, a, a perhaps a, a view coming from Nestle because we have one of the biggest R&D programs behind basic nutrition worldwide. We know that the correct or the wrong nutrition during the first 1,000 days of life can influence your health throughout life, even leading to obesity and diabetes later on in life. And we know a lot of this is during pregnancy, and a lot of this is because of the nutritional status of women where they tend to be the last to eat, after the in-laws, after the children, after the husband, they eat what's left over, so they eat wrong, either too little, too much, but definitely wrong. If we can change the nature of the dialogue instead of focusing on the problem, to saying what can we do as a society to change the nutritional status of women from being the last to eat to being the first to eat in the family, because that affects the health of future generations, not immediately, but even into the future, and can transform public health within the space of one generation, you change the nature of the debate from pure negativism to moving towards action-oriented. Action. What can each of us do? Not right. what can you do or government do or he do, 
but what all of us can do. Okay, what all of us can do. Thank you very much, Nandu. Uh, Madam Suri, I'm going to turn to you on uh, that point and take off from here. Again, repeating my question, why in a culture that actually worships its women as goddesses, are we at this sorry juncture? Uh, no, I don't think we are at a sorry juncture at all. Uh, yes, uh, there have been some hyenas uh, incidents, definitely, but I think we've been one of the first country democracies to have a woman leader, as Indira Gandhi. So uh, there are the good points and there are the bad points, and I can speak for myself. I, uh, I'm a woman in a, uh, in a very male-dominated industry, and I'm uh, very well accepted by all. So uh, we are not at a sorry juncture. Uh, like, like he said, I also am an optimist. And I believe that we have a great future ahead of us. And yes, the women need to be nurtured. I also agree with him when he says that the woman should be the first one to eat because she really shapes the future of the country. So I think we all need to work on, it, on this together. It cannot be just the responsibility of the government. It has to be a full social responsibility of all of us. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sinha, uh, to you. Uh, you know, we are uh, talking a day after uh, Network 18 uh, chose Arvind Kejriwal as the Indian of the Year. And I only say this not to mention my network, but the fact that the Indian of the Year uh, is the Aam Admi. Uh, you have uh, experience all across. Uh, give us your sense of how you would, at this stage, want to reshape Image India, if at all you feel the need. So, uh, you know, supposing uh, I say that VCG does very good work, you know, we get everything done in time, and then my consultants go to Nimish Bhai and say, you know what, we never do a complete uh, project on time, we really give bad advice. Whom do you think he'll believe? He'll believe my consultants. So when Indians go around the world, finding every podium to say how bad we are, how corrupt we are, how uh, many women we rape, people tend to believe it. I was in China. And one of the Chinese said, you know, one thing I can't stand about you Indians is that you keep saying you're so corrupt. Actually, you're too poor to be corrupt, and it annoys me that you keep saying you're corrupt. We are corrupt. We can teach you corruption. But the truth is, you know, if you look at our cities, Rio, Sao Paulo, Johannesburg, you know, you can't walk in those cities. Most of our cities are safe. Other, you know, I mean, and so, but this never gets any, any, any real uh, coverage. And then we need a little bit of humility and uh, uh, an engagement with the Anglo-Saxon and American press. We tend to ignore them, and then they write 44 negative pieces on us. I mean, I've followed The Economist, and we have had almost 44 continuous negative pieces. That's something. It happens rarely. Thank you. Uh, I also saw the uh, latest cover of The Economist, uh, at least the uh, edition that sells in this part of the world, and uh, it has Mr. Narendra Modi on the cover and asks the question, is he the right man for India? But uh, enough of that. Uh, let me now uh, go back to the business voice on the panel, and uh, 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 Minister Kurshid, uh, allow me to ask this. Uh, there is a slight concern, including written in uh, uh, all across the press, including today also, saying that perhaps uh, India overdid it. You have explained the matter, and clearly that's not my question to you. What I'm going to ask Mr. Mittal to respond uh, to is, does this spat uh, have any uh, sort of concerns? Will it leave an overhang, uh, for example, on business ties between India and the United States? Well, I hope not. I heard the minister speaking, and I've been uh, you know, hearing this narrative, and enough articles have been kind of coming around on this. But more than corporate, let me speak as an Indian. If there was any issue there, out there, which probably we don't know, and probably minister and the MEA probably, the government of India knows much better, I think there's a civil way to handle things. She's not a criminal. She is a, even if there is a, even if there's a flaw, it's a, it's a civilian position. You cannot treat women, diplomat, Indians. So even if it means that this pad is going to cost some bit to the corporate uh, world in India, I think corporate world must stand behind this decision of this country. It's not about us, it's about India. So I'm proud to be Indian. In this matter, I fully support the government that we must take it to the logical conclusion to make sure that world listens to us. They must respect us. Mr. Minister, uh, allow me to now ask you uh, a follow-up on that question, essentially. Sir, you've been um, in government for 10 years. The previous government, before you came into power, lost 
uh, election because uh, they had the temerity to come up with a brand and say India is shining, shining India. They lost power. Uh, would it be right uh, at all uh, or excessive to say in, th in the last 10 years that this government collectively has done its utmost and very best uh, to make shining India a whining India? Um. <clears throat> Well, uh, when children are born, uh, they, they come crying. Um, I think uh, the important thing is that when we grow up, uh, we should smile, and India is growing up. The legislation that we have brought, um, a lot of people say have come 20 years, 30 years too late, but legislations that will give you entitlement to food, entitlement to, to uh, free education, midday meal, entitlement to Bank, bank, direct bank transfers, uh, cash transfers, entitlement to uh, to good nourishment, good good quality health, health, uh, etc. Now, if you would just compare what we've done in terms of of social uh, social network uh, with the kind of debate that happened in the United States of America on on President Obama's health care, uh, I would imagine the wine there was much greater than the wine that we've ever had here. And uh, it's only because he wants to change something, fundamentally. And I think that we must take inspiration from, from what he did uh, with, with the health care bill, despite all the opposition, because when the world changes, there are some people who are going to complain, and some people, you know, a child cries because a child is mu much more comfortable in the womb. But if you leave the child in the womb, the mother and child die. Therefore, the child has to come out, and you have to understand why the child is crying. And I believe if there are any doctors here, they will tell you if a child doesn't cry when it's born, they hit it and make it cry. Uh, so it's not whining. It's not whining. It's, uh, it's, a, little bit of, it's a little bit of crying. And uh, when you hear the crying outside, you start celebrating. So what you call a whine, I call a cry, and I call, I call this a cry of democracy and a cry of freedom and a, fra and a cry of determination to grow up and be something profound. A teenage and Indian. We group. have faith in it, and it doesn't matter. You win an election, you lose an election. The point is, one day, history gives you a much better verdict than any passing elections do. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Uh, Maurice, you wanted to quickly come in on that, and then I have a couple of questions before we wrap up this session. Uh, pr pretty quickly, very, two, uh, very short point. The first one is that in the world today, people are expecting from uh, politicians, from diplomats, from public figure, a virtuous uh, uh, attitude and behavior which is second to none. And they don't forgive any uh, misbehavior. That is uh, the reality of the world of today, and we have to cope with that reality. The second aspect is about uh, uh, the fact that India is not perfect. And um, there is no country which is perfect. And the reason why people are uh, worried about the fact that India is not perfect is that people love India. And they right. are expecting from the people that they love a perfect attitude, something which is going beyond what they are expecting from their own country. Right. That is the reason why uh, uh, you, they, you, are so much uh, they are paying so much attention to what's happening on the wrong side of India. I, 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 I think we uh, agree with that point. What you're really telling us is that you really are not bothered about your enemy's brand image. What you really care about are friends and deep friends at that. I would happy, I'd be very happy to clap, clap for that one. <laughs> <laughs> well said. <laughs> Okay, uh, back to the ad man on the panel. Uh, Piyush, uh, we've sort of uh, been discussing this over the last 15 minutes. Therefore, if we talk about the loss of image India in the last 10 years, and I'm not being political here, you could say 15 years or just five years, pick your choose after 2008, before that, whatever, uh, your own timelines. But really the final point here which this audience would want uh, you to respond and perhaps uh, some other people on the panel. What therefore needs to be done uh, in the next 10 years? Not only are we at the threshold of an important political change, uh, we, uh, what that political change really means uh, is that there is a new door that is likely to open for millions of Indians when it comes to economic progress and upward mobility. What can we do to fix it? Uh, what is your advice? I said it earlier, we have to have stories. If we have great stories, growth will come. If growth comes, rule, 
inclusiveness will happen. I think we'll have stories and stories. Uh, I, I don't even think that this time frame that people put to it that uh, we have lost uh, the brand image of India in 10, 15 years. I think images are made over a period of time. And images are not lost by... Image. How many times have you heard a, a food brand had a problem uh, of infect, uh, infestation? Contamination. Uh, yeah. How did they come back within three months' time? Because you got to move. Well, for them to accept that you will slip sometimes. And the faster you come back, they will believe a little more in you. now by Piyush and Rajan and uh, Josna. Uh, I, I, I really think we need to improve. As Maurice said earlier, perception is reality and reality affects perception. So we need to change a way of looking at problems more constructively, engage in more rational dialogue to address problems rather than just talk about the negatives as Jan Major mentioned so eloquently earlier. Mr. Sinha. So, uh, in 2008, there were 1,275 projects of over 150 crores, 365 of them were stuck. Today, there are 585 projects of over 150 crores coming up, and 375 of those are stuck. If we just allow infrastructure projects to come on stream, sentiment will improve, and we don't need to really worry about the brand. The brand will take care of it. Let's just get growth going. Thank you very much. And one final uh, point. Think of us, uh, 1.2 billion Indians, at least uh, 300 million with the ability to go on Twitter. So if the media doesn't listen to you, make your voice heard on social media. Perhaps that will also contribute to building Brand India. Thank you very much to the entire panel and to the audience for being here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. As they leave, would our president kindly give them the green certificates? Which, which is our Fiki tradition of, of thanking people by planting trees in their name. And we will immediately move into the next session. Thank you very much, all delegates, for your patience. Kindly remain with us. We are moving straight in. Um, Mr. Arun Jaitley, the leader of opposition, has already arrived. He's, he's, in the, he's, he's just going to be joining us, and we are starting into the next session now. Thank you very much. The certificates, the certificates by, by our president to, to each of the panelists who have joined us today. Thank you very much for, for being with us. not working yeah okay thank you very much thank you for joining us thank you for being such wonderful panelists and also keeping to your time thank you for for doing that for us we will now we are, are a little late but we are moving into the very next session
Thank you, Honorable Minister, for staying right till the end. Thank you. We now request Mr. Siddharth Birla, President-elect, to kindly come up on stage. Madam Jyotsna Suri. He's here, he's here, he's bringing here he comes.